you know, it's like you, when you find a whole new perspective on something you thought you knew. Right. That's what we're doing today. We're really going to dig into breast cancer prevention, but with this natural lens. So we're going way beyond the typical stuff and like really unpacking how these bioidentical hormones play a part. It's like this whole other layer to breast health, you know. It is fascinating, isn't it? How like all these choices, the food we eat, even the products we use, they all kind of factor in. Like they're all weaving this tapestry of, well, our hormones, our health, everything. And speaking of hormones, this book, How to Prevent Breast Cancer, while using natural bioidentical hormones, it goes right for this protective estrogen, estriol. Mm. Okay, I was hooked right there. So it's not just about like, how much estrogen you have, it's the how your body actually uses it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're right. It's not just the amount. See, there are all these different types of estrogen, and they actually behave differently in the body. Like take estriol, for example. It prefers to bind to a, a specific type of estrogen receptor called ERO. And that one, well, it's less about making cells multiply like crazy compared to, say, the ERI receptor that other estrogens like estradiol are more into. So estriol is like taking it easy, going for that balance instead of just slamming the gas on cell growth. That's a great way to put it. And to figure out how your body is processing these estrogens, well, that's where this urine metabolite testing comes in. Think of it this way. It's like comparing... Um, um, a basic blood test, which yeah. just shows the total, to getting this detailed map of like all the different estrogen metabolites and how they stack up. That's how you see which pathway your body's leaning toward the protective 2 hydroxylation pathway or that riskier 16 hydroxylation one. Okay, so it's not just the amount of estrogen, but the type and how it's broken down. Like, instead of just seeing your location on a map, this is like checking the traffic patterns to get the whole picture. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And here's where it gets really neat. The book talks about how eating flax seeds regularly can actually kind of steer your estrogen metabolism in that good direction, that 2-hydroxylation pathway, all thanks to those lignans they have, mm -hmm. similar to what we want from estriol, actually. No way. Flax seeds have that kind of power. Yeah. You know, I'll be honest. When I first heard urine metabolite testing, I wasn't exactly jumping for joy, mm -hmm. but knowing it could tell me this much about my hormones, sign me up. Oh, it's a total game changer, definitely. Mm -hmm. And speaking of game changers... We can't forget progesterone. It's often called nature's anti-cancer crusader. It teams up with estriol to really create a good environment in breast tissue. Yeah, the book describes it as a delicate dance, and it really makes you think about how everything is connected. But tell me more about this crusader role. What makes progesterone so powerful? So imagine this. Your body's always making new cells, right? And sometimes those cells, well, they mess up a little when they copy their DNA. And if those mistakes aren't fixed, that's when you can get problems, like cancer. But progesterone, it steps in and regulates that whole process, even encouraging apoptosis that's like programmed cell death for those potentially cancerous cells. Wow. It's like having a tiny cleanup crew in there, making sure <laughs> only the healthy cells make it. That's wild. <laughs> it doesn't stop there, though, right? There's more. Oh, there's definitely more. Progesterone also interacts with those estrogen receptors we talked about. It's like it's modulating their activity, making them less sensitive to estrogen growth effects. Progesterone is like the voice of reason, you know, mm -hmm. keeping things in check, especially in breast tissue, which is what we're interested in. So it's a double whammy. Getting rid of potentially dangerous cells, and then on top of that, preventing too much growth in the first place. But the book mentioned even more than just this growth regulation and estrogen interaction. You're right, it does so much. Don't forget the anti-inflammatory powers of progesterone. Remember, when we have this chronic inflammation going on, it's like a simmering fire, right? Mm -hmm. And that can lead to all sorts of health issues, even cancer. But progesterone, it comes in and helps to like dampen those flames. It lowers the risk of things getting out of control. So it's like progesterone is this like multi-talented superhero, That's right? Great. Keeping everything in line and making sure those cells are playing nice. I'm really starting to see estriol and progesterone as this power couple in there, each with their own strengths, working together for our breast health. It really is this amazing synergy, yeah. And that's where this whole idea of bioidentical hormone therapy comes in. It's about getting that balance back when our bodies need a little extra support. And because we have those urine tests we talked about, those detailed ones, well, we can get really personalized with the approach for each woman. Okay, so what does that look like in real life? I mean, the book had mentioned creams, capsules, even something about vaginal inserts. It's not like a one-size-fits-all thing, is it? Not at all. It's about figuring out what's best for your body and how you live, you know, like... 
topical creams those are great for targeting specific areas like if someone's dealing with dryness they allow the hormones to be absorbed directly through the skin into the bloodstream and then you have the oral capsules those are more for those body-wide effects like those hot flashes or mood swings that can happen so it's about choosing how you want to take it, what works for you. Yeah. Other times when a vaginal insert would be the way to go. Definitely. For women who are having issues with vaginal dryness or atrophy, using a vaginal insert can deliver that estrogen right where they need it. It's much more direct. It's amazing how much control we have with this approach. Yeah. But it's not like you just start the hormones and you're done, right? You're right. It's not a one and done. It takes monitoring, you know, being consistent with it. Our bodies change. Hormone levels go up and down. So regular checkups with your doctor, that's really key to make sure your treatment is still working the way it should. It's more like a partnership then, right? Well, working with your doctor to adjust things as you go. Exactly. And this partnership it goes beyond just the appointments it's also about you like educating yourself getting informed being comfortable asking questions you're a part of this health journey i love that it's about owning our health i know a lot of women myself included have heard you know those cautionary stories about hormone therapy there's that worry about the risks especially when we're talking about breast cancer yeah. it could be a little scary to think about honestly those concerns are totally valid there's definitely been a lot of back and forth about it conflicting info out there but it's so important to remember, bioidentical hormones, they're not the same as synthetic hormones. Yeah, the book mentioned that, how bioidentical hormones are basically identical to what our bodies produce naturally. But synthetics, they're a little different chemically, right? Mm -hmm. Could that be where some of the confusion and concern come from? It's definitely a big part of it. You see, because of those differences, synthetic hormones can sometimes be stronger, have longer lasting effects in the body. And that can sometimes mean a higher risk of certain side effects, like blood clots or even stroke. That makes a lot of sense. So generally speaking, bioidentical hormones are seen as having a safer track record. That's what the research is pointing to, yeah. Studies are showing that when bioidentical hormone therapy is done right, meaning the right doses and regular monitoring, it's actually linked to a lower risk of those negative effects we talked about compared to using the synthetic hormones. Okay, that's reassuring. But what about the big question? breast cancer risk. When we're talking bioidentical hormones, specifically estriol and progesterone, how do they affect that risk? And this is where that personalized approach we keep mentioning really comes into play. Remember how we were talking about how different estrogens have different actions? Okay. Well, estriol, that protective one, research has shown again and again that it has a much lower risk profile than estriol. And this is where those detailed urine tests we talked about before are so crucial, right? You got it. Those tests, they're like a window into your own personal estrogen metabolism. That's how healthcare providers can say, okay, for you, based on your body and your results, is bioidentical hormone therapy, particularly with estriol, a safe and good option. It's all about using actual data to make these decisions, not just going with a general recommendation for everyone. It's about being smart and tailored in how we balance these hormones, not just throwing them back in there without a plan. But the type of hormone isn't the whole story. The dosage and how it's taken, that matters for safety too, right? Absolutely. Lower doses, especially when we're talking about applying them topically or vaginally, that usually means a better safety profile compared to higher doses taken orally. It's about minimizing that systemic exposure and being more targeted, delivering the hormones precisely where they're needed. So strategy and being precise with the approach is key. And again, having those regular chats with your doctor is crucial, both for monitoring progress and making those little tweaks along the way. That's it. It's about having that open communication with your doctor, working together to find that sweet spot, that balance where you feel your absolute best. It really is a journey, not a destination. And speaking of journeys, while this bioidentical hormone therapy sounds really promising, I know a lot of our listeners are into those natural alternatives, those extra things that can support breast health. I'm picturing certain herbs or supplements that might be helpful. Have you looked into any of that? Oh, absolutely. There are so many natural approaches out there that can work alongside conventional treatments and really add to a person's overall well-being. And you're right, the book does talk about some interesting herbs and supplements that seem to have potential for breast health. Any that stand out to you, I'm really curious to hear more. Well, flaxseed is one that always comes up, and we did touch on it briefly earlier, but it's worth another look. It's an amazing source of lignans, and remember those phytoestrogens we talked about? Mm. Well, lignans have a similar but gentler estrogen-like effect in the body. So it's like flax seeds are nature's way of 
gently nudging our estrogen balance in a good direction. That's a great way to think about it. Some studies are even suggesting that those lignans might actually have anti-cancer properties. Of course, more research is always being done in that area. That's incredible. Anything else catching your eye in the world of natural approaches to breast health? Turmeric is another one that often pops up in these conversations. Now, you've probably used it as a spice, but it has a long history of being used medicinally too. It's yeah. all thanks to curcumin, a compound in turmeric that's really great at fighting inflammation. And we've talked about how that chronic low-grade inflammation can be a real problem, right? It's like setting the stage for all sorts of issues, including cancer. Exactly. Curcumin comes in and helps to calm those inflammatory responses. And there's even some research hinting that it could have direct anti-cancer effects, although, like with many things, more research is definitely needed to confirm that. It's really amazing how nature just gives us these tools, these allies in this whole health journey. It really is, but it's important to be realistic, you know? Herbs and supplements, they aren't some magic cure. They work best when they're part of a bigger plan for your health things, like eating a balanced diet, getting regular exercise, and having good ways to deal with stress. And of course, always talk to your doctor or a qualified healthcare professional before starting any new supplements, especially if you're already on medication or have any health conditions. Such an important point. It's about working with your body, with your healthcare team, not trying to find a quick fix or do it all on your own. You got it. Make informed choices, be thoughtful about it, integrate these natural remedies as part of your overall health plan. And while we're talking about a holistic approach, well, let's not forget about those mind-body practices. Things like yoga, meditation, even just spending time in nature can make a difference. It was really interesting how much the book highlighted stress management for keeping hormones balanced. It's a huge factor. When we're stressed all the time, our bodies release cortisol, that fight or flight hormone. And if that goes on for too long, it can mess with the balance of other important hormones. And yep, that includes estrogen and progesterone. Wow, so it's not just about feeling calmer, it directly impacts those hormone levels. Exactly. Those mind-body practices, they help to calm everything down, reduce that cortisol, and it creates a much more balanced environment for estrogen and progesterone to do their thing. It's like finding that inner peace in all the craziness of life. It really is incredible how much of our health, even down to those tiny hormone interactions, is influenced by our thoughts, emotions, how we deal with the world around us. It's all interconnected. And realizing that, being aware of how our mental and emotional states impact us physically, well, that's powerful. It really makes you realize how much power we have, you know, mm -hmm. like we can actually steer things in the right direction. This whole deep dive into natural ways to prevent breast cancer has been, wow, eye-opening is an understatement. We've covered so much from the science to the lifestyle stuff and, of course, how important that personalized approach is. It's a lot to take in. But before we finish up, what are your final thoughts? What's the one big thing you hope our listeners will walk away with from this conversation? That's a good question. You know, if I had to pick just one thing, it'd be this. You have way more control over your breast health than you might think. It's so easy to think of diseases like cancer as these things that just happen, completely random. But the truth is, every single day, we're making choices that move us either closer to being healthy or further away. It's like we could be the CEOs of our own health, Yeah. right? Instead of feeling helpless, like we're just waiting to see what happens, we can actually do things to make a difference. Exactly. It's like that saying, genes might load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. It really puts the power back in our hands. I love that. And it highlights how important knowledge is. When we understand how all these systems in our bodies actually work, well, we can make much smarter choices. Exactly. And those choices, they're not just about dodging one specific disease. They're about aiming for optimal health, creating that internal environment where our bodies can really thrive. Like that saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? It's about building a life that supports us on every level physically, mentally, emotionally. Yeah. It's choosing those nutrient-rich foods, moving our bodies in ways that feel good, and being proactive about managing stress. It's even about being mindful of the stuff we use at home, yeah. the toxins we might be exposed to, and doing what we can to limit those whenever possible. Yes. Be an active participant, not just a passive bystander in your health. Ask questions, get informed, and find healthcare providers who really listen to you, who get that proactive approach. And remember, you're not in this alone. There are so many resources out there to guide you, to support you, to help you make those good choices for your health. And on that note, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your expertise with us today. It's been amazing diving deep into this with you. It's been my pleasure. And listeners, remember this. Knowledge is power.
The more you know about your body and what affects your health, the better prepared you'll be to make decisions that lead to a long, vibrant, and healthy life. So keep those questions coming, keep exploring, and most importantly, listen to your body. It's always talking to you, even in whispers. What a great note to end on. So that wraps up this deep dive, everyone. Until next time, keep seeking, keep learning, and keep thriving.